uh, saving some money and having uh, all the notices there not put in the paper but put into front porch form as a substitute which would save the town thousands of dollars because that's what it costs putting it in these papers. Uh, Sarah s indicated she didn't think it was uh, legal and it, so far uh, I, don't, I haven't seen where it is legal. However, I've been in contact with the Secretary of State who handles this and they're going to be getting back to me to give a, a ruling on whether it's uh, legal to, to uh, bypass the newspapers, which would save us uh, a lot of money. So that's Tom, in the Tom I will say uh, my understanding is that the town does legally need to put the agenda in a physical paper. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, the, the Essex reporter in Essex decided to stop doing print editions, yeah. and so we had to change our paper of record and start so, using seven days, which is substantially more expensive than Essex reporter was. Um, but yes, I do believe it has to be in a physical paper. Well, I didn't have a doubt, Sarah. I kind of knew she was <laughs> right, but I had to go through the process. I think you've answered my question that we have a statutory obligation to do this. And, it, and it's due to, yes, I agree, for, front porch form is awesome. Like, I use, <coughs> I'm fortunate I have internet. I <coughs> live in the digital world, but not everybody has that. And so there needs to be um, paper copies for people that don't have access to the digital yeah. world. Yeah. Tommy Gardner on here. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move on to new business. Uh, to review and sign the warning for the April 18th, 2023 special town meeting. And so far we have three articles that uh, haven't been officially warned yet. That's our task tonight. Article one, shall the town of Morristown adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680 part C. Article two, shall the town of Morristown elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680 section C, uh, B. And article three, shall the town of Morristown vote on all public questions by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680 part D. So that's what we have so far as suggested articles. I don't know if we want to put a motion out there right now in a second and then discuss this. That's what I'm going to suggest. Or Thanks, if sir. you would like to, I assume you need a motion to go forward with this. Um, Could, sorry, go ahead, Laura. Oh, no, go ahead. Could I just clarify town officers? Is that just the select board or does that include other positions? Sarah? It, it would be all officers. Currently, we vote select board by um, Australian ballot, but we don't vote all officers. Um, my understanding, we've been doing, oh, I forgot it in my office, but I think it's 1984 we, we did it. And my understanding from talking to VLCT and our attorney is that, that probably at the time we were allowed to do that. Current statute, um, if we were if we did it all on the floor right now, current statute would require us to do all officers um, by Australian ballot and not split it. But there are towns that split how they vote officers because of how, what was allowed at the time. Okay. What other positions fall under the officers though? Were there some other examples? Oh yeah, so um, I, I had submitted, we, this was in the packet a few um, weeks ago when the board reviewed the draft. Okay. Um, but so um, it would be moderator, okay. it would be a lister, it would be a trustee of public fund, a library trustee, and every three years it would be a clerk and a treasurer. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. And Sarah, it's my understanding that I'm going to anticipate this question might come up, but those articles that did fail last week on election day, if if they were to be re-voted, they would have to be done by ballot. So the budget, it's its own separate beast. So um, the budget, if a budget fails, it it it's sep it's different than the rest of them, um, because the select board enacted H um, forty two and moved everything to Australian ballot then the budget has to be voted on in the same manner that it was. Um, 
um, and so that and and that and that will have to be revoted on because we have to have a a, a budget. N nothing else that failed automatically gets revoted like the budget does. That would only be if I receive a petition by five percent of the voters within thirty days. So I would need to receive a petition, um, and there's very specific warning. Um, it's on the Secretary of State's um, website, but if anybody had questions, I can give it to them. Um, so that's due by April 7th, and it, I need the checklist changes, but about 215 uh, valid signatures. Those, um, because of how H42 is written, if I received a um, petition to rescind one and reconsider one of, one of the failed votes, that would also be on Australian ballot because we voted initially based on H42, which is really, it's really complicated because yeah. of the petition and, yeah. and H42 yeah. um, and how things yeah. are right now. Sarah, when you say in the manner in which it was voted, does that include mailing of ballots? Yeah. So, and I confirm with the Secretary of State's office, we oh. have to mail everybody awesome. ballots. Good. Thank you. And I've already ordered envelopes. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. So I would uh, entertain a motion then regarding this warning. I'll make a motion to approve the Town of Morristown, Vermont special meeting warning for April 18th, 2023. I will second. Thank you. Any discussion on the warning? Could, could, could you, I, it sounded like you read three different things. I did, yes. There was three different articles, Judy. Okay, they're all they're all going to be voted on at the same time. It's not three separate things we're voting on. No. Okay. I, th I think the motion that I've got right now includes all three articles. Correct. I'm approving the the town so, meeting warning in its entirety. So the article does, yeah. So it is as I read it. Could I guess you read I can, it again. I'm sorry. Okay, I can read the whole thing. So the warning, town of Morristown, Vermont. Special meeting, April 18th, 2023. The legal voters of the town of Morristown are hereby warned and notified to meet in the auditorium of People's Academy High School, 202 Copley Avenue in said town on April 18th, 2023 at 6 p.m. To, to transact the following business from the floor. Article one, shall the town of Morristown adopt all budget articles mm -hmm. by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680 part C. Article 2, shall the town of Morristown elect its town officers by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680 part B. Article 3, shall the town of Morristown vote on all public questions by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680 part D. Is that your motion, Travis? Yes. Okay, great. And that's your second, Laura? Yes. Okay, great. Did you get all that, Judy? Okay. Is there any discussion from the board? Good. Any discussion from the audience? Dave? Can I speak first? Yes, you can. Because they might be asking this question. I'm not really the one that can, I don't know if I'm the one that should speaking on this, but on the draft proposal that went out in the, um, the announcements, there was gonna be the article about the um, sidewalks. Side oh, yeah. And that's no longer on the article that we are um, oh, suggesting, no, on the warning that we're suggesting right now. I'm not really the best one to, okay. to speak on that, but I just wanted to point that out because I'm sure that's the question that everybody's gonna stand uh, up and ask. Okay, so can I, so can I, is there clarification on that? Yeah. So, we, yeah, so the, the one that went out in the packets did include the fourth article, which was to bring back the item of the two hundred thousand dollar money ask for the completion uh the, the filler sidewalks in jersey heights talking to jim barlow he said given the current political climate here in morrisville it's really not worth bringing it back if you get a second no vote in like, fact like the first one wasn't uh the, the the votes for number five on the last ballot didn't count but if you look at them as an indicator uh, bringing it back to a floor vote at this point in time just would uh, indicate that you're not going to get it passed. And he suggested if you can live another year with the holes between the, the sidewalks that have been built by the developers, 
that live with it and bring it back to the voters, educate them better next year on what you're actually spending the money on, uh, and that way they'll understand better what the, the sidewalks money that we're looking for is, is going to do. So. so is it my understanding that if an article comes up twice and fails, it can't be brought back? No, uh, not at all. It's, it's just that, Jim, it's, it hasn't been brought up once yet, but we all saw the results on Article 5 for folks who hadn't read okay. that, that that one doesn't count. Uh, he, he just suggested it was for, you know, in order to, to try and accomplish that sidewalk, which takes us all the way out to the path underneath the uh, bypass at the Bishop Marshall School, uh, it's a very important connector, sidewalk connector. And there was either a misunderstanding or something in the public about the sidewalks that we were asking for the money to build, because a lot of people thought we were just building sidewalks for the new development out there, and in fact, by DIB requirement, the developers are building new sidewalks along their property lines. So they've done their due diligence and built those sidewalks. We were looking to fill the gaps. We had a continuous stretch of sidewalk to maintain. So we don't maintain sidewalks that are not connected. So we won't be maintaining that stretch of sidewalks at least for another year until we can get it to the voters again. Okay, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Sarah. Go ahead. Can I add on to you that? Sure so, so the re recommendation from um, the attorney was that um, the select board focus on um, the budget, and we have the Australian ballot re-budget vote that will be sometime in the future, and we focus on um, the petition that we got, and we will have the floor meeting that we're discussing right now, and that um, then if there's, if we get a petition to rescind an article, then we will, we will deal and plan with that um, for an election when the time comes, but that the select board should just focus on the budget and the petition they received. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. State your name, please. <laughs> we know your name, but state your name. <laughs> My name's uh, Dave Campbell, and I live here in Marshall. I'm a little confused on what you're voting on. You're voting on the articles that failed at on the budget? <laughs> no, we're voting on, these are the, these were not voted on this past week. These are three articles that were pushed to the special meeting. These are articles that need to be voted. Sarah, correct me where I go wrong, but these are articles that I believe need to be voted on a floor vote. They would need to be voted for in a traditional town meeting manner in order to push them to Australian ballot because they are articles, because they, they're, changing, they're changing the rules by which we would normally vote on them. In the past, these would always have been voted on as a floor vote, and in order to change them to Australian ballot, they need to be voted f on as a floor vote. So um, your t the floor vote would, is on the 18th? Correct, at People's Academy. And the only ones that can vote are the ones that go, to the, go there? And there's nothing so we right can back. do about that. We're right back to where we there's, were of having town meetings. There's nothing we can only do. Only a handful of people dictated what uh, we got to pay or, or whatever. And I think I mean that, I am equally. It doesn't seem. I am equally frustrated. It's not us. It's state law. Yeah, it's it nothing. doesn't seem. But is anybody well, negotiating or whatever proper word is with the state that that needs to be changed or? Or is it just a dead eye and say, well, that's what it is, that's what it is? Well, we're, we're not actually voting. I mean, we're voting, uh, as uh, they've said before, the way the statute reads currently is you can't vote on, a article, on an article ballot. So, that's, but, so all we're asking is that going forward, the town, the floor meeting will be going forward that we'll always have the budget on the um, Australia. All the, all the so we're not voting numbers yeah. or anything. No, I, I understand yeah. that, okay. but I know it's a catch twenty two and in order to change I know how the outcome's gonna be, it's gonna be the opposite of what we want because only a handful of people are gonna go <laughs> are, are gonna go to the to the meeting whether to put it on Australian ballot or well, then you got to call. At this point, yeah, we have... The gym doesn't hold 4,100 people. Yeah. yeah. At the this gym point. holds... Fire <coughs> limit is probably 200 or 300 tops that can go into that gymnasium. So what if the whole town decided to come? Or, and it's the same thing here. Uh, 
you know, before town meeting, I heard one of the representatives of this town, and it really ticked me off, that I asked why couldn't the, some of the meetings that you had prior to town meeting and everything be held at the VFW? Well, because they charge us a thousand dollars. Well, that's an absolutely false statement. I'm a member of Morseville VFW. I was an officer, and the only people that pay for activities over there, somebody's getting married or a baby shower, but most of the time we donate, you know, the room. And even over there, the capacity isn't even 200 people. And you know, it's you know, it's just. I share your frustration, and unfortunately, we are obligated I, to not, do this. My frustration isn't with you guys; it's with yeah. the state. But yeah. my other question is: Are you sending state the state? The proper letter asking for maybe a <coughs> or we're talking to our representatives, our congressmen, senators, or whatever, to try to maybe. I have written to our representatives in Montpelier about this process, and I think if you want to try to change any process in Montpelier, it takes longer than a week. So. Um, and I understand that. More, more people can write and 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 uh, express their concern. They made changes um, to the town process quickly this year, and um, they didn't give us the length of time we needed to make the changes properly. No, that I understand. But you know, I'd like to see forth going where at least we know our town is trying to. Uh, maybe help change something and uh, but because I know these five people here have an awful job to do. They're, they're never going to be right and they're never going to be wrong. <laughs> it's, uh, so, so it's a hard position. I would, I would just ask to join us and get as many people as possible to that meeting. This is I think you know article one is the result of a, of a uh, petition that was the put around town. I think most of us are familiar with that. The select board decided to add articles two and three yeah, to this. And yes, you did. And, um, you know, we just need to get as many people there as possible. I mean, this is the whole frustration, isn't it? That yeah. for the last many years, we've only had 200 people at town meeting. And, and last, uh, last week we had 1800 people voting. I mean, boy, that's, you can't, can't say anything better than that. Can you? And, and hopefully we will get through this. Hopefully these articles will pass and we will have 45, 50% or more of the people in Morristown voting every year. But I personally want to thank every one of you. And thank, yourself, you. thank you. You folks and I don't thank want to you. see Bob leave, but I understand. So. so we have a motion on the floor. David. Paul, the question. Yeah, do you mind if I... Judy, go ahead. Is it, no, is it Judy? Yes, call the question. Uh, we have a request to call the question. All those in favor? This is a procedural issue. All those in favor of calling the question? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, I don't understand the... Calling the question just means to force the vote that we would vote and, on the motion. Discussion. 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 Are, are we ready to vote? <clears throat> End of discussion. Thank you. All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Three to two. Three has it. So, all those in favor of the motion to accept the warning as it has been read? Aye. 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 Opposed? None, so that would be unanimous. Okay, old business. Do we have any old business, Eric? No. Approve the warrants. Do we have warrants to approve tonight? We have no warrants to approve. Do we have a town administrator's report? As briefly as I can make it, uh, we have done the Brand Pond site walk with interested contractors for the Conservation Commission's project to uh, construct a parking lot at the end of the road in order for folks to park off the road uh, when they're accessing the state and the town forest for hiking uh, or winter winter activities as well. Uh, we have uh, 
we'll be bringing the bid results back to the board for the I think the 20th I think the the date and timeline is for us to have it for you for the 20th uh, tomorrow uh, Senator Welch will be in town doing a walkabout uh, very controlled and very short timeline uh, to visit three local businesses um, he is going to be speaking to the owners of power play sports Thompson's flower shop uh, and the uh, Former president of MoCo Association, uh, Don, is going to be there to speak on behalf of MoCo. And then uh, they're going to culminate his visit with a, a trip to the uh, Village Center Apartments for a tour. Um, so that happens tomorrow. Uh, phase two construction of the upstairs of this building is complete. We have moved our HR department and the finance department upstairs now. Um, they've. Uh, Donnie Blake's team has done a fantastic job up there. Um, it's a beautiful new space. It allows us to expand and not be stacking people up on tables in here, uh, rather than they have their office space to work from. So we have a little bit more construction to do in the former finance office. There, we're splitting that with a, a, a petition wall to create office space for uh, the recreation coordinator and the community development coordinator. So that we expect to have that construction done over the next day or two. Uh, I want to uh, recognize the staff of the town clerk's office, the BCA, and volunteers who have once again pulled off an election, uh, mailed ballots. It's been a hectic couple of weeks, and our three staff here that work full time work more than full time. They've done a fantastic job, smiles included. Uh, maybe a tear dropped here and there. <laughs> it's been a long couple of weeks, so uh, I wanted to recognize them and thank them for their work. Uh, and lastly, I just want to put a thank you out to Brian Kellogg. He served on the select board for over 20 years. Uh, he has been a historical record keeper in many of our conversations and um, also served uh, decades on the fire department and has served as our animal control officer for over 40 years. So uh, he has certainly done his share of civic duties, and uh, so I appreciate his service to the select board and to our community, and uh, I'll miss him. Thank you to Brian. That's it. Thank you, Eric. I wouldn't be doing my dil due diligence. I, I rarely have to correct you, but um, we call this um, store, this business in downtown Morrisville, MOCO on a regular basis. It is officially not MOCO. That's all I've ever known. Somebody, somebody, else, <laughs> somebody else owns the patent to that. Oh, so I just want to say it is the Morrisville Food Co op. I make the mistake all the time as a board member up there. And uh, But, anyways, thank you for that. Look forward to seeing Senator Welch tomorrow. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go. <laughs> Select board comments. Travis, I'm gonna start with you. Sure. <clears throat> um, so I, I did write a statement here. Um, so I wanted to address the comments that Mr. Bob Beeman said to the News and Citizen regarding me this week. Um, they were published today for those who have not seen them. Um, I just wanted to state that I'm disheartened that looking for answers and transparency on the budget came across in Mr. Beeman's words as um, berating, critical, and insulting. I'm new to the political landscape, and I will continue the work on how I communicate to ensure my message is captured by everyone the way I intend it to be received. Um, moving beyond our differences, I do want to thank you, Bob, for your service. I'm truly sorry to see you go before we've had a chance to work together. As I know that at the end of the day, we both want what is best for the town and its residents. Often democracy requires people with different opinions to sit together and find compromise, and I believe our community is better served when we have a variety of opinions at the table. Um, it saddens, saddens me to see the leader of our board step down during a time when we need strong leadership more than ever, um, but I will try to do my best to be a valuable leader and member of this board going forward, and I hope that we can all work together to help lead this town into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Laura? Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, it was incredibly uplifting. Um, 
and inspirational to be involved in this election uh, and to see folks rallying around. And uh, I, I have, I keep bringing it up, but um, you know, at my age, I never thought I'd be on the corner with a sign, and I was, and we had a blast. Uh, and just the waving at people, and it seems so basic, but um, to see that kind of uh, rallied spirit and community involvement um, is tremendous. And I would like to thank you all. Um, and I think going forward, I'm very excited about the future uh, and the fact that um, we have ways to communicate in a much more effective way. Um, and that um, we, I'm thrilled to hear your ideas. I think think tanks are amazing. Um, anytime there's a small community of anything in a business, it starts getting insular and a fishbowl. Um, so I highly uh, value input because I have experiences, but everyone's limited. And sometimes you, we get set on ideas, and it just takes someone else to say, what about this? So I, I hope that um, this whole process has, <coughs> is more inviting than um, eliminating people. Um, and I, again, I thank the board for everything, and I think, um, you know, my, I have run on the fact that I am hoping for civility and respect. Um, I worked for a very, very large company where I um, oversaw six, uh, 60 artists. And if anybody's worked with artists, you know they have big egos. Mm -hmm. And my turn of phrase became, check your egos at the door. We're here to be professional. And we're not all going to ever like each other. That is a reality. But we are expected to treat everybody professionally and with respect. And I think if we all go forward, um, that we can make a huge difference. It's going to be ugly coming up. Um, I mean, there's just no way around it. There's some hard realities coming up that we're going to have to face. Um, and that I, I ask everyone to not take it personally or get defensive. But let's work together, and we will get through this, and we will be better off in the end. So again, thank you all, and I'm, I'm, I can't believe I haven't met so many of you, so I'm thrilled. Thank you. Judy. Thank you. Um, yes, I want to follow up on what Eric was saying, um, thanking Brian. I know he was on here before. I don't see him now, but um his uh, institutional memory is going to be greatly missed uh, it was very helpful to have that at the table frequently to come back and and, and share what went on in the past um I welcome laura and travis to the board and um i that's all i have to say for this evening and then um don thank you for um uh, chair chair picking up and chairing and um Bob, we will chat later. <laughs> Love working with you. I'm going to go next. Um, I I also want to uh, send my appreciation to Brian. I didn't know Brian real well when I got on the board. I had heard a long, an awful lot about Brian. There's a lot of people that grew up with Brian in this town, probably went and went to school with Brian. Uh, I have some very good friends that I've taught with um, that went to school with Brian. Brian's a true gentleman. He's a, he's a great guy. He's certainly done his public duty. I'm not gonna repeat everything that Eric's already said, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna miss the guy, you know? But at least I get to go down to Stowe once in a while and see him, so that'll be good. Second, um, Mr. Beeman, you're gonna get the final word tonight, and um, that's out of respect for you. I joined this board a year ago. I know I've said this to you recently, and I, I think you kind of wondered where I was coming from, and I probably wondered where you were coming from too, but. Yeah, we didn't know I each have, other at all, did we? We didn't know each other, and uh, we haven't had that drink together yet, but uh, I have gained a lot of respect for you. Um, I know you have loved what you've done. 
I'm sad to see you go. I am. I, I sincerely am. I, we haven't always agreed. We didn't vote together tonight several times, but you know, but that's what this is all about. Yes. And um, so, anyways, I'll I'm gonna let you say what you need to say because you'll say it better than I will. And to the town, um, it's been a tough six, eight weeks. And uh, we have a tough six, eight weeks coming up, is my guess. And you, many of you have heard me say this before. I, it can't be personal. It's about the town. It's about the budget. It's about money. But it's not about people. It's not about names. And I hope we can keep the names out of it. I hope we can be cordial. I have, again, I came on here a year ago, and I knew, I knew some of the people that worked for this town, but I certainly didn't know them all. Some of them I taught. Some of them I wrote college, rec recommendations. college recommendations for. <laughs> but I've come to, to have incredible respect for the people that work for this town and we should all be very very proud of them and we should remember that as we go forward it is really important if we're going to come out better on the other end which i hope we we do it's not going to happen if we start talking about people and their names and their you know it's just, it's not going to work that way. Um, we've got to put a budget together. We've got a big job to do. Um, we've got to get a budget passed. This town has got to move forward. I've lived almost my entire adult life here. Um, I am, I am very dedicated to making sure that that happens, that we get a budget and we get a budget that's going to pass. The townspeople have spoken loud and clear. We hear it. We've all heard it. Um, and uh, again, I just ask that we we do this with civility. So I'll just stop there. Mr. Beeman. You had a comment first? I just had a quick question or statement. David Ring. Um, this may, may take a, a different motion, but I, I want to speak to something where I just got uh, slammed by the fact that you wouldn't let me talk a minute ago by a vote. And this, we are discussing right now old business, correct? No. No. Nope. We're doing select, select board, board concerns. concerns right now. Where is that? It's old business was number nine. Four, Article nine. Four topics ago. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll have community concerns next. It's yeah, if you'd like to, Dave, would you like to wait till we get to community sure, service? Sure. Okay, great, thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead, Bob. All right, I am. Um, <clears throat> I originally had a very long sort of resignation speech prepared, probably a 10 minute read, <clears throat> and um, but I'm not going to read it because I want to take the high road and I'm not going to deflect any negativity on the board that I'm leaving behind. Um, I believe most of you know that um, I'm stepping down effective immediately. I do wish the town all the best and I thank all the town staff and departments for being so great for so many years. Um, we're very lucky to have such great people to work for the town and I mean everybody, the department heads, the staff, everybody. And, um, and they certainly deserve far better than the way they've been treated these last few months. And I want to apologize for that to them myself. I sincerely hope that the town and community can come together and put their differences aside and come forward with a budget and plan that is agreeable to most and will work best for Morristown's future. This, this last um, Tuesday was 15 years for me on the board. And I have to say that I, I enjoyed the first 14 of them very much. You know, even the long meetings at 10 o'clock at night and and everything that was discussing, even, uh, you know, some heated discussions at times. 
but the last year has been really tough and um, I'm going to leave it at that. I, I don't want to I don't want to deflect any neg negativity and I don't want to be the last thing I say up here be something that's um, bitter. So I just want to thank everybody for the time the time I served and I really appreciate Morristown. I, I was born in Copley Hospital. I grew up here, um, you know, served 30 plus years on rescue and 15 years here. So I just want to thank everybody and realize that um, it does take a whole town to go forward positively. Um, and I include myself. I, I know that I've been known in the past and perhaps maybe even I was elected because I'm the guy that just tells it like it is. I'm not afraid to say something where some people bite their lips sometimes. And I still feel that way. I, I stand behind what I said to Tommy Gardner when he interviewed me. But, you know, it may not always, always be the best thing to say, and sometimes it uh, isn't always the, the, the cur perfectly correct vision of the public figure. But I say what I think, and I mean it. And, but I do, I do agree with only one thing that Travis said tonight is I think we, we both have the town's interests at heart. And um, I'll, I'll leave with that. I just want to say thanks to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Bob, before, before we go on, Donna, I'd just like to say also that um, Bob, you leaving the, the board, you're the last true Vermonter sitting there that's, that's leaving the board. I mean, you, you grew up in town and, um, uh, you know, and the institutional, institutional memory goes with you. I was always very impressed because you had knowledge about the, you were a former police officer. You worked in the police department. I'm not quite sure what your, uh, your job was, but you brought that experience. You brought your experience as a firefighter as, as well as uh, Brian, you were very familiar with how the highway department worked. And those pieces of, of experience and knowledge were so invaluable. And I appreciated working with you. I appreciated how you would run meetings most of the time because you were very uh, patient and kind to people um, almost all the time that they approached the, the table. And uh, I, I learned a lot from you and thank you for your service. Thanks, Judy. <clears throat> Community comments. If you have comments, I'd ask you to approach the microphone, direct your comments, please, <coughs> towards the, the chair, and uh, try and limit your comments to three minutes or less, if possible. Go ahead, Tony. So I want to thank Bob. Bob, you've been you've been good. Okay, sorry to see you leave, because I wanted to keep fighting with you. <laughs> <laughs> I like fighting. So to mend the town, I want to propose that the town throws this budget into aust austerity. I think they pronounce it. Help me out, Travis. Come on. I think he got it right, Tony. Austerity. So instead of going back voting. Uh, six, seven weeks from now, I think the budget should be thrown into austerity for another year. And let's, let's budget for what we need and come across, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the uh, new appraisals will be out by then. And I think it'll make a lot of sense and I think it'll mend the town. Thanks. Thanks, Tony. Any other comments, Bob? Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't vote for Brian Kellogg, but I like Brian. And uh, our differences of where we wanted to see the town go didn't make me dislike it. And uh, I somehow hope that going forward. It's not just the budget that we're, we're faced with. We're faced with multiple big issues that we are all going to have to give and take a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get everything I want. I know that, and I'm okay with that. And I'm not going to be 
inconsiderate of somebody who disagrees with me. But if we all are willing to give and take a little, we can move forward. Uh, Vermont and Morrisville has never been lockstep in tune with the rest of the country. We never have. And you think back through our history and today, it's, it's very true. We have an opportunity here to go away from what the rest of the country is right now. Division, hatred, people shooting each other. We, we don't want that for our community. And so a suggestion that I would make, and it has to do with Brian Kellogg, is if the town could send a letter of recognition or a certificate of recognition uh, to him. I think that it is well deserved. It's well deserved by Bob and everyone who has served on a board here. It's, I'm going to be on a board soon. I'm going to expect that <laughs> things are not going to always go the way I would want them to go. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And I think we all have to be okay with where we're going. And we can't create this divisiveness that we see because we're not going to go forward if we do that. We're just going to end up screaming at each other and calling each other names and nothing's going to get done. So that's my spiel. Okay. And I hope that we can move forward in a very positive way, give and take, whether you are on the losing side or winning side, accept what it is and try and move forward in a civ civ civil way with each other. That's my greatest hope for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If we do send a card, I would personally like to sign it. Has the town ever done resolutions of appreciation or anything of that nature? Yes. Is that something we could explore? Certainly could. I'd support that for Bob and for Brian. Are you talking about sending something out of the legislature? Um, or even just a resolution of appreciation signed by the select board that gets documented in the minutes, okay. expressing our support and thanks to those two. I okay. certainly have gotten one of those from both planning and DRB. Yeah. I, think I, it, I, think I thought it, it was procedure, but. I think it would be a very appropriate gesture here. We have a hand up on the Zoom. I, is that Kathy? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I agree with Tom, um, whatever that word is. But the, I think the <laughs> most part that I've heard from taxpayers is it's very hard to vote on a budget this high when we don't even know the values of our homes. So that's that's a, the main problem that that's hard. I mean, if I value at 200 now and in two months I value at 400, that's a big difference. And I, I, I physically can't vote yes until I know the value of my home. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Anna, I believe that's Anna. Hi there. Um, I just want to say um, that as a young person who grew up in our town, um, I went to school here, um, I, I came out of a job where I was not, it, I wasn't treated very well. Um, and I'm the new recreation coordinator for our town. Um, I really wanted to get involved in our community and that felt really important to me. Um, I wanted to be a part of what was going on in our town. And I was skeptical, <laughs> um, but as I've just entered into the work environment and I've seen the way that the town is run, I feel really proud to be a part of the people who work for the town and serve the town. Um, I've just been really surprised at the people who've given their lives to, to take care of people and to serve the community. Um, and I feel really proud to be a part of that team. Um, and I know that the people who've been sitting on the select board have done a really difficult job over the last 
six to eight weeks, um, as well as the people who filled the positions within the town. And I just personally, as a resident of the town, want to thank you all um, for sticking with it and just doing a really, really difficult job um, and doing it well. And you've maintained a really positive work environment. And yeah, we've all been um, really pushing through that. And I just want to thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, you've done a really good job. Thank you, Anna. Kathy's Any other comments? Is this community concerns? This is community comments, community yeah. concerns. Yeah. All right. May I? And you you certainly may. Else? Go, go ahead, David. I'm going to bring up some points, and I'd like, uh, we, you may want to make them under other business, but um, there's been some comments about uh, Brian and 20 years and his wonderful services. And I'd like to talk about something I read in one of the town reports somewhere. There's a bridge over Kenfield Brook. It's either on Cody Hill or Cole. Cole Cody Road or? It's Cole Hill. Cole, Cole Hill. Um, I took a look at that, and, and then that bridge will make you sick if you get underneath and take a look at it. And I would like to, right now, here and now, ask the select board to immediately post that or put barriers up so you can have one-way traffic only on that bridge until you can get some money or some funding to fix it because it is horrible. It's a serious, dangerous situation. You need to play, allow, you need traffic over it, one way only. You don't need both traffics. And if you get two big trucks on that, something's going to happen and you aren't going to like it. So that's one concern. Can I the second David, is this the Walton Road Bridge? No. Uh, over no. Kenfield? Over the Kenfield Brook, I think it's, it's either Cody Hill or Cole Hill. It's right in Morristown Corners, just outside of Morristown Corners. Going up. Up the hill. Yeah, it's a, take a look at the town report. Just look at the town report. You'll see there's an entire study that's been on it. Several million dollars to replace it because you've got to do both abutments plus the bridge. It's a serious situation. But the least you can do, the absolute least you can do, is to, is to put some concrete barriers up there so that only one, one truck or one car can get across there at one time. Put signs up. Say one-way traffic. Just do it. And the second thing about that bridge is I think... Um, you've just, as a board, um, decided to uh, name a bridge right here in town the Francis Favreau Bridge. And Francis happens to be my uncle, by the way. So I think that you should consider, if it takes a motion to do it, do it, naming that bridge the Brian Kellogg Bridge, the one I'm just speaking of. It's going to be new soon. It's got to be new. Somebody's going to pay for it, but I think it should be named the Brian Kellogg Bridge. Just a consideration. Unfortunately, Bob, you're leaving, so we're going to have to find another one for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The second thing I wanted to talk about, and this may not be the point, is Article, uh, this, you just, you kind of ruled me out of order to talk about this. And uh, what I'm saying this is, is that uh, special meeting, the warning, I know there's a lot of interest. There's a lot of problems, and one of them is sidewalks. I live in the village. I've seen a lot of good things come along with sidewalks, but I know there's still some horrible ones. I know that they're horrible to walk on. You can trip and fall because they're, they're, they're uneven. But I think they're also, since there's a lot of new buildings, there's going to have to be some sidewalks. So I would like to see, because I think you can still do it, because this right now is just on paper. <clears throat> I'd like to see you add an Article 4. And I want to speak to the fact that somebody thought there was some sidewalks necessary out on the Jersey Heights area. Unfortunately, it was worded wrong, and I think it was totally, I think it was totally put out there wrong. Uh, possibly the, 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 the contractors that are out there should be paying the bill. But I think there needs to be some supervision, coordination, and oversight by the town or the village. So I would propose that you put an article in there, Article 4, shall the voters authorize, no, authorize the 
to review and con coordinate the possible construction. I'm leaving out as possible construction. Review and coordinate the possible construction of sidewalks on Jersey Heights and any remaining balance should be used for sidewalk operating expenses in amount not to exceed $2,000, not $200,000, $2,000, just to get your foot in the door or keep your foot in the door to be financed over a period of five years. If you can do that. I think it would be very wise to do it and well done. Only $2,000. I've given them the option. People can vote yay or nay because you know, it's worded as review and coordinate the possible construction. Because at least you can hire a, an engineer or a surveyor to walk out there and review the design of the contractor's sidewalks. So you know it's got some concrete there, real concrete, and not, not junk. It's got some reinforcement in there, just not, you know, something's going to fall apart in five years. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you, David. Any other community comments? Ron. Thank you. State your name. I'm sorry to see you go too, Bob. I uh, can recall working with you, I think, uh, many years ago when you first started. One of the things that I have a concern about has to do with what's being posted on Front Porch Forum now about a possible uh, <laughs> excavation of rock out on between Cochran Road and uh, Route 100. I was at the DRB hearing. I'm gonna just summarize into a very brief thing. That article, section 485, in the title specifically says, soils, sand, gravel. It excludes stone, rock, pebbles, boulders. This is a situation where the select board has the authority over the DRB. And <clears throat> the DRB is going to make a choice. But it was very wrongly stated that the fact that in one of the subparagraphs that mentioned blasting, the opportunity for blasting in the gravel pit might only occur if the contractor or whoever's utilizing the gravel pit wants to bust up big rocks that a crusher can't handle. That's the only situation. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Any other concerns? Any other comments from the community? Okay, I'm going to move on. Other business? Denny's back there. I just wanted to say thank you to um, Mitzi and Elizabeth for all their work on the election. Thank you to all the BCA, all the select board, um, all the volunteers. It's, it takes a lot of hands, and thank you to everybody. And thank you to you, Sarah, because yeah. you're, uh, you, you're the one that's driving the ship on this one. So, Denny. Dennis de Gugurio, Morristown resident. The way my world's been going, I need you to approve me as chief or not. We had our election in January. After every town meeting, the select board needs to approve the chief, and I want it done before you leave. Um, we went to school together, so that's all I need to say there. But. It's a decision that needs to be made to make it legal. And if you don't want to vote me in, then I go tell the guys and we'll see where it goes from there. It's a tough I'm, tell, and Me and you will talk about Robert's rules. Danny, I don't think we, uh, did we leave something off the agenda? Yeah, you don't know our elections. 
I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry. K1 is elected every odd year. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. K1, the chief. The chief. Yeah. Is every other year. Okay. We do odds and evens. Okay. Odd numbers or odd years, which is one. One is the only one you guys have to approve as a board because I'm a department head, but I'm proud to say I'm the last volunteer department head. We've done it before. We've done so, it over the years. It's, it's be done for two years. If you want. Do we make a motion? What are we doing here? You cannot make a motion. We cannot make a motion. I'm no, sorry, we are not on a warned item, so we cannot have a motion. I'm sorry, it cannot happen tonight. I don't think there's any intent by the board to not have Dennis continue as our fire chief. Uh, Just let me know, because if it's no, I'll make one call. And you're <coughs> no, stop. you're good. D Danny, it's not no. <laughs> can you wait till March 20th? I can wait. It's good. up to you guys. Well, I think, as Eric's to. saying, it wasn't worn tonight, so we can't take action on it. Right. Okay. But, but I think, Danny, we can say... It. You got my vote. Because you have my vote, Dennis. I don't know. You forgot about me, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I did to you. You got my vote. <laughs> You've always had my vote, buddy. But, no, so I just... Thank you. It kept going, kept going, and I don't read the paper you got, so... I just figured I'd wait for other business because that's usually when I talk. It is. You used to, you used to pipe up a lot more, Denny. You're pretty quiet these days. Well, I gotta be because I'm worse than you when it comes to being politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> there will be no gray area when I'm done. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Any other other business? I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Travis. We have a motion to adjourn from Judy and a second from Travis. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you very much. We, 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 we have to do liquor control. Oh, we have liquor control. No. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we got to do that. Thank you. <laughs> do you want to follow that order? Yeah. Here. Make a motion that we go into liquor control tobacco. <clears throat> I would like to uh, call the Board of Liquor Co Control, Tobacco and Liquor Control to order at 6.52. I got mine. Whatever you come take mine. <laughs> Mine's coming home. Mine's coming home. You got some kids? I did. And he loves popcorn. Just one. Two bags of plenty. I was going to say, I'm going to. When I get home, I'm going to eat my popcorn. My kids are obsessed with popcorn. It's his favorite food right now. Is he. He's not quite four yet. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Hold on. He's a cute. I saw him in the car when he drove by. Oh, yeah. He's a cute. Does he look more like your wife than you? Um, he looks a lot like my brother. Oh, okay. He looks a lot like I did as a kid. Yeah. Oh, he's different. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jason, are you still from the Liquor Control Board? Okay, I'm just going to repeat that I called the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control to order at 652. Any agenda changes or additions? Hey, folks, can you step out? Excuse me. Do we have minutes from February 21st? Yeah, they're there, the next page. I make the motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second it. So we have motion by Judy and a second by Bob. Any discussion about the minutes from February 21st? All those in favor of approving the minutes from February 21st? Aye. 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 Well, we can't, we can't any nays? There. Any, abs you any can. abstentions? You can on that. Oh, you only can't vote if you're Right. 
Yep. Okay, that was uh, passed unanimously. Yep. Number four, liquor license applications. Uh, Sarah? So there's five um, liquor license renewals. DG uh, Realty LLC, Premium Properties Morrisville LLC, Martin's Food of South Burlington LLC, the VFW, and the Copley Golf Corporation. So DJ Retail, do we know what that is? Uh, Dollar General. Dollar General. And Premium Properties is what my family calls Tomlinson's because yeah. I've lived here for <laughs> okay. that long. And um, Martin's Foods is Hanford's. Okay. Jason? Good with all those. Good with all those? I'll entertain a motion. Still moved. So we have a motion to approve the liquor licenses Second. for these five. Second by Bob. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Tobacco license applications. Sarah. Oh, Judy, I forgot I'm supposed to be taking minutes. Are you taking minutes for now? I got your back. Thank you. <laughs> this is oh, new please. that I'm I supposed to do this. I can't present and take minutes. You can't minutes. do both. It's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can type them now. I'll type them. <laughs> um, uh, uh, there's two um, liquor, uh, tobacco license renewals to approve DJ, uh, DG Realty, which is Dollar General, and Premium Properties, Marcel, which is Tomlinson's. And that um, Tomlinson's is for both tobacco and tobacco substitute endorsement. I don't know if the two of you are new. Um, it's for vaping products. Yep. 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 <laughs> okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. A second by Laura. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That would be unanimous. Special event permit applications? No. Nope. No? I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. <laughs> Seconded by Judy. All those in favor of adjournment from liquor and tobacco? Aye. Aye. And that is unanimous as well. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Jason. Bye.